Welcome to Western Kentucky University Reports. I'm Jim Wayne Miller. Robert Penn Warren and Jesse Stewart, distinguished American poets and novelists, have written often of their native Kentucky. Stewart from Greenup County, Kentucky, has always written of his home place and his people in the Cumberland foothills. Warren, a native of Guthrie, Kentucky, and the only American writer to win Pulitzer Prizes for both poetry and fiction, has frequently drawn on his home state and region for materials and inspiration. Recently, we visited with both Jesse Stewart and Robert Penn Warren. First, in a discussion with Dr. James Heldman, head of the Department of English at Western, Mr. Warren told how a verse play with which he was dissatisfied evolved into his famous novel, All the King's Men. Key was the notion that a man comes to power, a Hitler, a Stalin, uh, any man of, of, of power, because he feels some need and uh, preys on some weakness of people in his context. They need him. People get what they deserve in the way of government. It's, it's their weakness or their uh, debility or their uh, vice that brings a man to his role. It's one view of history anyway. Anyway, the needs of the people around my character gave me the new story, the, the novel story as opposed to the, the uh, play story. And that was, a, that was a shift on that basis. The narrator being the chief, pers chief person whose need was fulfilled by my politician. Then did did, you didn't envision it, of course, originally that that Jack Burden would would loom as largely as he finally does in the novel. At the time you began to work with him there, no, I did not. It was only a convenience in the very first moment. Somebody controlled the story. As it were some mm -hmm. point of view from which to see the story, and with a vague general idea, he helped me locate the context. But quickly you discover, if you're writing a story, that the narrator has to be involved more or less to make it important. Otherwise, why is he telling the story? Mm -hmm. And so he became, very quickly, the person whose need was fulfilled most completely by the politician. And his need, of course, has to be explained has as well. Has to be explained. Mm -hmm. So then you have to invent a world for him to come out of to explain him. And so this counterpoint grew out of that situation, the counterpoint between his story and Stark's story. Very often, you find a technical problem leading to the content, even, of a story. It Jesse Stewart is Kentucky's poet laureate and one of America's most anthologized writers. Although he is at home in Kentucky, his books, translated into 15 languages, are home all over the world. I talked with Jesse Stewart about a decision he made early in his career. The typical um, situation of writers that's been reported over 40, 50 years in America is to uh, come out of the Midwest or come out of the South and, um, and head for New York City. That's right. And you didn't go that route. No. <laughs> no, I didn't go to Hollywood either. You didn't go to Hollywood. I was offered a place there and yes. good money, but I didn't go. You went back to Kentucky. I went back and uh, lived within a mile of where I was born. Yeah. On the same land where five generations mm -hmm. of us have lived, and I think it's a good place. In fact, I love it. I, I don't stay there all the time. We've lived in other foreign countries. Uh, yeah. I, I, my wife and I have lived in two, mm -hmm. and I've lived in three. I lived in one before mm -hmm. I was married. Mm -hmm. And uh, but just as quick as I get uh, away from a foreign country, I head back for home. Yeah. Yeah. It's one of the finest places, and I I could take all this time explaining why that we live in this North Temperate Zone. Good balance of four seasons, right through Kentucky, Virginia, across through here. It's a marvelous place to live. Yes, great. 
And even back uh, when you were writing the poems that went into Man with a Bull Tongue Plow, I believe you, you had that same kind of uh, idea. There's a poem in here which expresses that, that idea of going home. Apparently, you're away from home when you write it. I wonder if you'd, you'd mind reading that for us. Yes, I can tell you where I wrote this poem. <clears throat> I was hitchhiking home from Lincoln Memorial University and before I got into Berea College, along that road down there somewhere. About oh, 25 then, somewhere. Yes, I wrote this poem. Yeah. I was standing beside the road and I wrote it. <laughs> Kentucky, I shall return to you someday to live out in your wind and rain and sun and watch your trees and fields together run and orchards whiten with the blooms of May. I shall go back and sit before the fires at home and tell tales with a fellow rover before I'm cold and the best of life is over, we'll tell of happier days and fighting sires. I shall go back to tramp the crimson leaves that spread like quilts upon the frosty ground. I'll take my gun and faithful hunting hound and be alone where wind and treetop grieves. Kentucky, your dwindling autumn streams flow out across old meadows of my dreams. Yeah. Well, it is a fantastic thing that has happened. You went home, but You've gone all over the world anyway. Yes, I go out there. Both yes. literally and figuratively. Uh, your work has gone all over the world, and you have gone all over the world, too. Yes, indeed. All because you went home. Because I went home. That's uh, not a bad title, is it, going home? This program was produced by Western Kentucky University. 